life in general is very much impacted by the health of our mind, by our mindset. And today we're going to talk about our mindset and why it is so important. I'm just going to share a short testimony about my, um, my relationship with the Lord, how that came to be, and also my MS story. So for many years, I was in the self-help market. So for like 12 years, I, I um, immersed myself in the self-help market, trying to learn everything that I can about how to become a better version of myself. And during that time, I had read this book called The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. And that book saved me. It shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with me and it blew my eyes wide open. It just removed the veil. You know, it goes with that song, I once was blind, but now I see. And that's how it happened for me. So now my MS story, I was a baby Christian when I was first diagnosed with MS. So I was diagnosed with MS in uh, 2013 and I had just become like a, a real believer in Jesus Christ, probably around 2010. So in 2013, I had exercised the night before. I'd done insanity. It's an intense cardiovascular workout. When I woke up in the morning, my uh, feet felt numb. So I really didn't think anything was really wrong. I thought maybe I hurt my back. So that was on Saturday and by Wednesday. So I drove to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I drove to work. Yeah. At that time I worked at a hospital. So I drove myself to work and the numbness had spread up to like my inner thighs. So I knew that there was something wrong. So I, I got to work, I dropped off all my stuff, and then I went to the ER to be seen. And so they initially done um, a CT of my back because they wanted to make sure that I didn't have like tumor pressing on my spine. And they ran a bunch of blood work and made sure it wasn't like Lyme's disease and you know, a couple other things. And then um, once I was done there, the ER physician told me that I would have to schedule an appointment with my primary care physician uh, for further testing. So. Thankfully, I was able to get into that primary care within a couple of weeks. And when I got into her, she said that they were going to do an MRI of my back, yes, but also of my head. And at first, I just thought she was crazy. I had no idea why you would give me an MRI of my head when my back or when my legs, you know, and my feet were numb. So it didn't really make sense to me, but thank goodness she is a good doctor. So. She had done the scans of my body. She had sent me to get the scans of my body. And during that time from uh, the scans to getting the results, her nurse had actually been killed in a car accident. So when the results come back in and they sent me to a neurologist, the wrong paperwork got sent to the neurologist and he thought that I was coming up there just for a, um, uh, I don't even know what kind of test, like a muscle test. Like he, he done some, uh, used this device to really test my muscles to see how they were working. So I'm not real sure what paperwork he had. So I asked him a few times during the appointment, did you receive the MRI of my head? And of my back, you know, I had MRIs done. He's like, oh no, it's not that kind of an appointment. You know, the paperwork that was sent up had said nothing about your MRIs or really any kind of idea for diagnosis. And so I went through that appointment with him and then um, I was on my way out, literally walking down the hallway and that neurologist had come up to me from behind and he was like, wait, wait, wait a second. Actually, I do have some MRI results for you. And so he he takes me into this little like cubby, this little like closet, like waiting area, not even a waiting area. It was just a little spot, a little opening or an indent in the 
hallway and he takes me in there and he says, actually, from the MRI results of your head, of your brain, it looks like you have MS. And I could have fell over. I was in shock. So th then I just had to leave. And he said, you know, your, your physician will send you back up here and then we'll be able to do the proper testing on you to confirm if you have MS or not. Shocked. So my husband was with me at the time and uh, I had went out and I tried to call my family physician who wasn't there. And so I really just broke down in tears and just cried for a good two minutes while I just was in shock and just didn't know what to think. So from that diagnosis for about two years, I was really in a, a bad place. I was really in a bad space. I literally could not feel anything emotionally. I was not happy. I was not sad. I was not depressed. I literally just couldn't feel anything. I was numb. And so for those two years, I carried my Bible with me, but I literally could not read it because I just could not believe that I had been diagnosed with MS. So that's my story. That's how I came to the Lord was through my personal development uh, time, these 12 years that I really uh, uh, learned and studied in the personal development area. And then also my MS story, how I got diagnosed. So I was thankful at that time that I knew the power of the mind, but I did not use that information for the first two years after diagnosis. So I just wanted to share that with you so that you knew where I was coming from and what my diagnosis was, how the story came about and how my conversion into Christianity came about. Life in general is um, very much impacted by the health of our mind, by our mindset. So we're gonna look first at Philippians 4, 8, and it says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. The Lord cares about our mindset. The Bible literally says that we have the mind of Christ. Now that is powerful. So we have to know that we are capable of thinking powerful thoughts. And when we read the Bible, and when that truth confirms what we think or what we may not know to be truth yet, that's a huge revelation, okay? That's called revelation knowledge. And I just want to encourage you to to get into the Bible, to memorize scripture, okay? Scripture, I call them power thoughts, okay? So for me, I would take a three by five index card and I would write scripture on it. And I would use that card throughout the day, throughout the week to memorize that scripture, to really get it not only in my mind to know it, but to believe it. That is where our power comes from. That is where these power thoughts are really going to come into play when we are forced to be intentional about our focus. So when I was diagnosed with MS, really, I was just caught off guard. And at the time, I really spiraled down into this pit of despair because I my mind was not renewed with the holy scriptures okay with truth my mind i i had learned about the power of the mind i had learned about uh, self-help and personal development and i knew a lot of good techniques and i knew about affirmations and um incantations and stuff but when it comes to being powerful in your life as a believer, as a Christian, memorizing scripture is literally the number one way 
for us to be strong, for us to be strong in mind. So when you have to intentionally focus, when you have to redirect your focus, if you have been caught off guard about something, then I want you to just say the words out loud or to yourself, say the words cancel, cancel, and then immediately replace that negative thought with a power thought, okay? So an example, if I think the thought that um, I'm never going to be well, that it's going to end up, I'm going to be disabled, I'm going to be in a wheelchair, you know, I have that flicker of thought and it, it just really uh, makes me uncomfortable, makes me sad, immediately, I have learned to say, cancel, cancel. And I learned that from Tony Robbins. So it really just takes me out of that negative thought. So I'm just like, cancel, cancel. The Lord has good plans for me, plans to prosper me and not to harm me, plans to give me a hope and a future. And that's from Jeremiah. And I memorized that scripture so that I could say it when negative thoughts popped into my head. So that's an example of how to be in control of your mind. That's an example of how to live with a healthy mind, how to develop a healthy mind. It starts by renewing your mind. I can remember when I first became a Christian, I was so worldly. Like the advice that I gave, the thoughts that I thought, the words that I said, the actions that I, they were so worldly, you know, in worldly advice or worldly information. I mean, it can only take you so far. You're eventually going to run out of that wisdom of that knowledge of that word. And you're going to need as Christians. Now I'm talking about Christians here. We're going to need the word because the word is alive and active and it speaks into our very situations. So having a healthy mind is also achieved by being aware of our negative thoughts, okay? The negative thoughts that pop into our minds can really go unnoticed sometimes. I honestly thought that I did not think negatively. When I first became a Christian, or when I really when I started to learn about renewing your mind and the power of your mind and positive thoughts and affirmations, I wouldn't have thought, I wouldn't have said that I was a negative person. But once I become aware, became aware of the thoughts that I was thinking, they were kind of negative. And I lived in that space for a long time. And, and once I became aware of, um, of the focus of my mind, where my mind went the majority of the time, I knew that I needed a change so that I could live in a healthier space. So we have to be intentional about thinking positive thoughts. That's why scripture memorization is so important because when you need it, when you need those words of encouragement and um, you are you're in a, in a space of uh, being unsure or you're a little unsteady, those words of truth really help us to refocus on what God says, on what his word says that he has for us, not on what the world says, okay? So we have to renew our mind in small steps every day. Don't think that you are going to memorize the whole Bible in a couple months, in a year. Don't think that you're going to memorize even a chapter of the Bible in a couple months. You have to start small. And I know that, um, that people sometimes say that either, you know, it's a saying, go big or go home. Well, that's really just a saying. And when we take on too much at once, we become overwhelmed and we just give up. So I'm encouraging you today to renew your mind with small steps, small steps. Get your Bible, 
What I really like and what I started off with is the book, the, what is it? The Bible promise book. And that's how I started to memorize scripture. That's how I started to pick out scriptures that were relevant to me at the time. So when you look through the contents, the table of contents in a promise book, it literally names off things that you could possibly be going through at the time. So here's just an example. So the first one, it starts off with anger and then belief and charity and comfort, contentment. So listen, if you're struggling with anger, and this is one of the verses that I memorized at first, it says that the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. And that's Psalms 145.8. So the Lord is slow to anger and rich in love. So as a child of God, as a believer in Jesus Christ, it is within my power, once I renew my mind to that scripture, to be compassionate and gracious and slow to anger and rich in love. So I hope that word encourages you.